So we get 0.5625 is exactly what we were given. Then to find y3, right, um, we're going to plug this in. So, of course, here, um, let's actually, so remember we plug in the value from the, the previous answer. So this first one is um, 0.5625 plus, remember, the value of the function when we plug in the previous point. So the previous point is 0 0.5, 0 0.5625. Of course, we don't plug in the t because there's no t's in our equation. So we have 1 plus 0.5625, which of course is 1.5625 and then times delta t, which is 0.25. And our answer is 0.953125. Um, now, y4, you can see the pattern, right? Um, we had 0 here, we plugged in 0. We had 0.25, we plugged in 0.25. We had 0.5625, we plugged in 0.5625. So the first term here is going to be 0.953125 plus the value of the function when we plug in the previous point, which we're plugging in this value for y, is going to be 1.953125. And then, as always, times delta t, sorry for the uh, cramped board here, which is 0.25. And the answer here for y, y4 is one point four four one four zero six two. Now again if this were a multiple choice test and you see that your answer, you know, one of your answer choices is one point four four, um, you know that that's correct. Um, if you're having to if, if you're showing your work and you need to write out your answer, it's not a multiple choice, um, go ahead and write every decimal place just to be safe um, so that the professor knows that you um, you did the problem correctly. So that is our final answer for our Euler's method um, approximation. Now they also asked us to solve the equation um, and then plug in 1 for t and, and get an answer for y. So let's go ahead and write up here um, the answer that we got 1.4414062. Okay, so that was our answer using uh, Euler's method. Now we're going to go ahead and um, and solve the equation using uh, calculus, and we should get answers that are fairly close. One thing to note: the more um, the more steps you take, for example, if this had been m equals eight, um, the closer your approximation is going to be. So don't be surprised if, if if you're using n equals two or n equals four, and you have to go you know between one and zero. If this answer is a little bit different than the answer that you get when you actually solve the problem and plug in the point, um, they shouldn't be too different though. If you're if you're getting ten versus twenty, then you might want to go back and, and check your work. So we have to actually solve this equation, and the way that we do it, um, we have y prime equals one plus y which y prime is the same thing as the derivative of this y equation, which we can also write as dy over dx. These are the same thing. Um, the reason that I'm writing it this way is so that we can treat this like separable equations or differential equations and, um, and solve this, this equation using calculus. So um, if you uh, need help with separable or differential equations, please go to that section on the website. We've got a bunch of problems there. Um, I'm not going to go through it a ton here. I'm just going to kind of um, go right through and solve the problem. So uh, differential equations or separable equations, the goal is to get um, the variables separated. So we, you can see we have y's and x's here. We want to get x's on one side, y's on another. So the way that we're going to do that is multiple, multiply both sides by dx. So we get dy equals 1 plus y times dx. Then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 1 plus y, and that'll, that'll um, officially separate our variables for us. So we'll have dy over um, 1 plus y equals dx. And um, the only thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and 
um, simplify this, I'm going to pull the dy out of it. So what we'll have is 1 over 1 plus y dy equals dx. So you can see I just I pulled the dy out so that this would be separate. Um, I think it's easier to see. It'll be easier to, um, to perform the integration even though they, they're the exact same thing. It's just easier to, to see what we're looking at here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation. So the way that we do that with um, the left side, we're going to go ahead and um, use our formula, right? The, the formula we're going to use here, if you remember, the integral of 1 over x equals the absolute value of, or sorry, <laughs> silly, is equal to um, natural log, or ln, of the absolute value of x. So here, um, when we integrate the left side, we'll have natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus y. Um, the only thing that we have to be careful of here, if um, we always, when we, when we use this formula, we always have to make sure that we multiply, um, or sorry, we divide by the, um, the derivative of the inside here. Um, in other words, use chain rule. In this case, the derivative of the inside, 1 plus y, the derivative of that is just 1. So technically we would be dividing by 1, but we don't need to write that. Um, it's irrelevant. So if this had been 1 plus 2y, the derivative, of course, would be 2, and we would have to divide this whole thing by 2. But please always remember to do that when you're, um, when you're using this formula to find an integral. So we have natural log of the absolute value, um, that's what these brackets mean here, of 1 plus y, and then on the other side, the, um, the integral of dx is, of course, just x, and then we have to add c to account for the constant. Now what we need to do is simplify um, this equation. We're, we're hoping to uh, solve for y. So the way that we do that, um, we want to get rid of this natural log. And the, the way that we do that is raising both sides to the base of e instead of to the power. Um, so now this is e to the, and this becomes the exponent, natural log of the absolute value, and x plus c is the exponent on this side. And what that does is cancel this e and um, ln here, and we're just left with uh, 1 plus y, absolute value of 1 plus y, equals um, e to the x plus c. Um, that looks like an e. <laughs> e to the x plus c. Um, so now what we want to do is, uh, is simplify this further. Let's go ahead and erase this side so we have plenty of room. Um, Here's another, another formula for you. When we have e to the x plus c, um, that's actually the same thing as, I want to make sure you can see this, that's actually the same thing as e to the x, e to the c. Um, you can break apart the exponent on an e and just multiply them together like this. Um, if this were minus c, then we have e to the x, e to the negative c. So um, that's how you can break apart uh, an exponent. And the reason that we want to break it apart is because this now, eventually we're going to end up solving for c. This e to the c um, is just a constant. Um, we're, we're looking to solve for c. So when we have e to the c, um, we can move it out in front here. So we end up with 1 plus y equals c e to the x. This e to the c just becomes c and, and we can move it out in front. Um, so uh, we have c e to the x. Now what we want to do, we want to get rid of these absolute value brackets. And the way that we do that, um, because absolute value means that, for example, if you, um, if you plugged in negative 11 for y, uh, you would get negative 10 here on the side and you'd have the absolute value of negative 10. Um, but absolute value means it always has to be positive. So that negative 10 would just become 10. 